So, uh, you know, it can, it can go on until people stop coming to the dances. Is that enough? The sport was invented by Americans, and like a lot of those things, they won it for years and years. Certainly the World Championship of team flying for, for the first five years. But luckily enough, uh, we were able to uh, take the cup away from them in November. So we're the world champions. A British team is also the European champions. We've had the European individual champion for the last two years. Um, I would definitely say that Britain is one of the strongest uh, sport kiting nations around. This is the workroom where um, I'll mend the, mend the kites for the team, um, modify stuff, uh, build the flags and so on. Um, uh, starting over here we've got a kite which I've got to fix later, um, just a spar was broken in it. A spar is one of the bones that make up the fr skeleton of the kite really, it's not the, the, f uh, the fabric sail of the kite, it's the, the framework and um, in the kites that we're flying with their carbon fibre like this one where they're very lightweight. Um, maybe even eight, six or eight grams in weight. One kite to fix there, um, fabrics on the wall. Uh, what we're using is ripstop nylon or polyester in the kites these days. Um, it's the same fabric that's used in spinnakers on yachts. Building something that flies and works is you know, a great achievement and you feel you know, a great sense of success when you're out there and it you know, looks great in the sky and you're happy with what you've done. The aerodynamics of a sport kite can be quite complicated to go into detail but to talk about it simply is probably the easiest thing to do. You've got a, uh, two halves of the kite and they're creating an aerofoil section similar to the the aerofoil section on, a, on, a, on an aeroplane wing and the faster the kite goes the more pull it creates and the more pull it creates the faster it goes etc etc so it tends to speed up quite nicely and it will fly in very low winds because of the efficiency of the wing. It's got long pointy wing tips which mean it means it turns quickly because the wing tips create drag and they almost sort of make a pinpoint turn in the sky <coughs> rather than the diamond shaped kites which are a bit, uh, they look a bit more clumsy in the sky, they sort of have a larger turning circle. These have a very tight turning circle. Um, they're, they're quite flexible but very strong, so you can, you're able to do very sharp square corners, which is, you know, pretty nifty. The lines are made out of a, of a fibre called Spectra, which was originally used to um, to tie down um, oil rigs in the North Sea. Um, they're, they're stronger than steel, they're flexible, so it's like string. Um, this, in fact, you could probably sew with in a machine, but it's, it'll take 80 pounds in weight. And we have different, different thicknesses or different weights of line for different winds. So 80 pound we'd use in light wind, then we'd go up to 300, 400, 500 pound for strong wind. Whoa. Each set of four kites, the bridle on those four kites will be exactly the same. They'll be, they'll be flown together and they'll be set together as well. And same with building the kites up, they're all sewn by the same person so that uh, one kite isn't different to another kite. They're all, you know, if there is a slight discrepancy, it's, there's a slight discrepancy running through the whole set.
Right. Stick practice is where we have, um, we use the, the carbon fiber sticks that we use for kites. They're about um, a meter long, these sticks. And we have a little cut out um, profile of a kite on the end of each stick, which means we can actually learn new maneuvers that we write. Um, and if they go wrong, you just hit someone with your stick and you don't break kites in, in the air. So we learn everything on sticks first, then we go out and practice them. But it's also a way of keeping your familiarity with the routine, practicing things, just checking things, people know exactly where they're supposed to be going. So you can much easier look at other people's kites because it's on a small, smaller area than right across the window, which could be 300 feet apart with two kites, and you're trying to check if they're both in appropriate position. So it's a way of keeping things um, smooth. There's usually one person in, in a team who will call. Um, they'll be at the front of the line, as it were. They'll be the first kite that you see, and they'll be uh, using their, you know, using their voice to to call manoeuvres and then turns and so on. So it, it's synchronising the whole team. We use three basic calls which are turn, break and stall um, th for things like landings or something where you need a, a build up where there's a count we use one, two, three and then there's an imaginary fourth call where we execute that the landing or you know the manoeuvre whatever it might be on that <coughs> on the four so the four is in your head and it's like one, two, three, dum. Flying is an element uh, sport. It completely relies on the wind. Well, apart from the indoor, you know, kite flying that we do. Um, so you're always outdoors, and you know, there's physical effort involved. So you're exerting yourself. So you get a positive benefit from doing that. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, when you launch a kite into the sky, you launch your soul into the sky as well, and you kind of air your soul as well as hanging out your soul in the fresh air, and it cleanses it. This year we're hoping to have eight, nine or ten teams in the national championship, which would be the highest number that they'd ever been. Um, it's on the increase. Uh, there are a number of teams who are active without uh, having the, the courage to compete yet, and so we need to encourage them in. Uh, but yes, it's definitely a sport that's on the increase.